I've decided that that's how I am going to announce that Alyssa is pregnant when the time comes. Mm. I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm simply going to buy a pair of white New Balances and start wearing them and wait. Can you please wait? And, can you actually yeah, do that? Yeah, no, that's 100% my plan. Okay, good. And I, so we're going to be like, I'm going to catch on right away. Yeah, I, you're going to see it. You're going to be like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 33, I hope, of the Daily Motor Podcast. Um, does that sound right? I think it's right. Yeah. 303. Or 330, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Daily Motor Podcast, not sponsored by All Brand Cereal. No. Uh, Chris didn't bring his, his gift. To bring, yeah. I, gi- I gifted Chris a box of All Brand you cereal mean, for his birthday. You mean All Brand sent us a box of All Brand because we're sponsored. Yeah, that's yeah, right. They knew your birthday was coming out. <laughs> well, it was funny that uh, there was actually a commenter on our live stream last week, our live drive, that was claiming to be Chris Brower. And yeah, what let was that about? That it was his birthday. Um, I think he like either deleted. His, I think he deleted his account or something because I went back and looked at the live chat replay and all his chats were gone, or hers. This could have been a woman. That's so weird. I yeah. don't think you can't like. Can you hack a YouTube? I mean, I have two. I mean, you can, you can, obviously, you can, you can everything, hack. But you anything. have two FA and everything, yeah. so you're fine. Yeah, I'm I sure they just, just so like confused. took your your logo and your name. I didn't know people wanted to be me so bad. It's probably that guy that I was going to um, say. You have someone who spends half of our chat. Like literally, we had like 50 deleted messages from our like moderators, like del- like blocking people, just being obnoxious, trying to say like Wash Chris Brower and everything like that. So I don't know who has set out for your life. Did you, do you have like an ex-girlfriend or something that like is just super petty? No. And, and did you sell like a shitty E90 to anyone who was no. like. I mean, okay. I sold a shitty E90, but it, I mean, the person that bought it, I was very transparent. So. About how shitty it was. It wasn't that shitty. I fixed all the shitty stuff before I sold it. To be fair, it's just an E90. It's good. Yeah, be it's shitty. just, they're shitty no matter what. If you're impersonating the Topher on the Daily Motor channel, stop. Get some help. Don't stop. Keep being me. Okay. Fair enough. If, if he's cool with it. I don't care. We might need to run the air conditioning. It's actually quite so, warm. It's so hot in here. You want to get up and... Uh, I, would, I would love to do that. Tap that on there. I but turn the to. fan low. Uh, your motorcycle fell over. Oh, no. Uh, the fan. Lower it down. I finally got to... We see those little that little indication. There's a, there's a, there's those little like um, LED lines that tell you if. Oh, I see. Yep. It's a very intuitive display. I always just walk into my office, press on, and that's it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of motorcycles, I got to meet the uh, PR person for Honda Power Sports, both oh, on road. Are you gonna get some big Goldwing things? I would very much like to get a big Goldwing. But what I'd actually really like to do, their headquarters is down by Atlanta, and I'd like to go down and compare all five of their mini motos, the the, Ru- oh, the, the monkey. Grom, the Monkey, the Trail 125, the Super Cub, and then they have a um, a Navi. That sounds like your oh. dream press trip. Yeah, It'd yeah, be yeah. Like I, I want to just have all five thing. of them there and say, like, which is the best, because it'd be a huge video online for, like, which Honda mini moto should you choose. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah, I shot him an email today. If you're listening, don't steal that idea. Yeah, grr. Uh, fun fact, we'll get back to Honda, but, uh, <laughs> speaking of steal your ideas, um, Roman at TFL is now following us. Um, so hi Roman. Hello Roman. I know you're listening <laughs> and yeah, you also don't steal that idea, Roman, because they have a TFL bikes channel. And Why do. did you say speaking of stealing ideas? <laughs> no, it was more speaking of, uh, li- like people listening. Oh, people listening. I got yep, you. Yep, yep, because, because he will use that. So, um, because they were the ones who, not that they heard it from us at all, but did a cheap overlanding challenge. Oh, right, yeah. Um, which we had talked about very many episodes Roman, ago. Roman, stop stealing our ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just played it off very innocently, like he didn't yeah. already listen to the Daily Motor stealing podcast. Stealing our stuff, man. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But to be fair, I stole his idea that he recommended to me of creating new channels. And now we have three. Daily Motor, DM Sound, and DM Testing. I realize DM Testing is not going to have very many videos going up on it for the, the, the near future because... We haven't been fuel testing a bunch of cars, and yeah. we don't, at max, we only record two per week right now for that mm. channel. Now, in the future, I plan on doing performance, performance testing, testing, but it's like a lot of things still need to happen before that happens. Yeah. So, 
Either way, we are over 1% of the uh, watch time threshold on DM test uh, sound to be monetized. So that's good. You're what? Just 1%. You're at 1% out of 100? Yeah. It's 40, <laughs> it's 4,000 hours. You know that. Well, trust me, I'm not even there yet on Tover Drives. I'm right, at like exactly. 2,000 uh, 2, of the 4,000 hours. Right. If you're listening, go to Tover Drives and DM sound at the same time and play all the videos on loop. Yep. Yeah, that actually is a pretty good idea. I should go home and start that. Because that's what I used to do for Daily Motor at the beginning, is just have in the background a loop going um, of all the of all the playlist of videos. But I think the search traffic is going to start picking up DM sound pretty well and uh, and start pushing stuff. We shall see. A lot of, a lot of mixed reviews in the comments. Yeah, I was surprised that people... Loved it or hated it or whatever. Yeah, to be fair, I think the, the, the haters are always the loudest. And there were... 20 people or so who are like, that's a terrible idea. You're, you're garbage. You shouldn't get to do that. I don't think people realize like, it's not like we did it for any sort of like personal, like financial gain. It's more work. And the main reasons we're doing it are one, so that if people literally only care about one topic of, or of something, like if they don't want to hear us blabbering away on the DM podcast and don't even want to see them, they can simply sign up to see the sound tests Yeah, and just do that mm -hmm. and, and bugger off. Uh, and also, you know, trying to please the algorithm as well and kind of just make our content more digestible for both people and machines. But machines. It's, it's not like it was like, uh, we think we're so good that we deserve to have three channels. It's not like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. we'll see. We shall see how it plays out. Yeah, no, I think it'll, I think it'll overall be fine in the long run. Okay. Um, and now that I have your upload default set and everything, it should be just about as easy as like making sure you're on the right channel. And Oh, I know. It didn't make anything harder for me. I don't yeah. Know. That's that's my main goal is not making anything more difficult for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. The only thing that will be more difficult is once we're uploading like ten videos a week, and then you'll. Why are we going to be uploading ten videos a week? We have the opportunity to now because we have three different channels, so we can. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you guys stop hearing from me, <laughs> I'm editing Charlie's videos. <laughs> While I was at Honda, um, I actually flipped over in a Honda Talon. Did you? I did. Why did you do that? Um, but, like well, on the roof. Yeah, like hanging from the seatbelt upside down, like, wow. Like, how did I get here? Were you alone? No, I was a passenger. <laughs> oh, you were a passenger? Yes. Who was driving? Seth Mearsma. I don't know who that is. Uh, good. He is the one who gave Chris permission to start the Winding Road channel. Yeah, so OG, like, Winding Road. So guy. you're okay that he flipped you in a talent? Yeah, for all the people to flip me, I was okay with it being Seth. Um, the problem you never drove those talons we had, right? There's a little before. No, but I have helmet. driven a Polaris side by side and I did almost flip it Fair enough. when they, I was like 16. They're very tippy. Yeah. And, and the thing I got is, full two wheel, like almost flipped it. Yeah. You have to be either neutral or on power when you're turning. If you try to turn and brake at the same time, especially if you're on a surface that has a lot of traction, it will probably flip because yeah. there's no understeer in a side by side. No, it just like, grip. It's not like a car that you're just gonna like we did in no, IX grips. or something. It, it grips, grips and then you and just the suspension boom. sags and it goes right over. Uh -huh. So that's what happened. We we were doing an off road course in the towns and I drove first and of course ripped it because Amos and I had those for two months and I know how to throw them around and yeah. you, 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 like I said, you sort of slow down before you get into the corner. You turn, you smash the gas, and it sort of just slides and you're like wee. But he, Seth, on his first round, I was like, maybe this is a little sketch. But I always try to be like the calm passenger. I, <laughs> I know a lot of people like get very nervous as passengers because yeah. they're like, I'm not in control. And I understand that like this was a professional driver, you know, more or less a journalist. And I was like, I should just, you know, go with the flow. I'm strapped. I got safety gear or whatever. So I didn't say anything. He goes around the second time and within like the first sharp corner, vroom, tipped. Yeah, and I just like, oh, oh boy, okay, we're going. And then we're just hanging there by our seatbelts. On the roof. Up on the roof, completely upside down. Nice. Um, and it's just like, okay, great. Was What's he happened? like, you all right? <laughs> Pretty much. He yeah. felt really bad because he was not the first one to tip one that day. Ah. Right beforehand when I was driving, the people in front of us tipped. Uh, but they had only rolled onto their side. We rolled all the way up onto our roof. Um, Did it damage the talons? Not really. I mean, I think I it feel like they're up. probably meant to flip over. Exactly. Those roll cages are so strong. Like, yeah. You, you weren't. There's nets and everything. We weren't really like in danger per se. Uh, I did tear off a plastic piece on the first one that flipped, and I didn't see what happened on ours because someone had to come out to like actually roll it back over. We were able to roll the first one over because there were four of us that all kind of like manhandled it back. <laughs> 
but it was kind of chaotic. I felt bad for Honda PR because they were they set up this talent course for all these journalists. Yeah. And didn't really give any like, you know, here's how to drive one. It did, was just um, kind of like lead follow, like let's go have fun. Did did Chris go out on a talent? He did. Chris and, and Tedward rode together and of okay. course they both loved it, ripped them and everything. And, yeah. And Tedward had a bunch of fun. He's a great driver. And by we were the first wave. There were three like waves of journalists to go through them. And by the second wave, they just weren't even letting people drive. They just gave ride along. <laughs> they gave rides because people kept crashing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which to some people was probably more fun because they hooned and were like jumping it and everything on the ride along. So that was probably more exciting in some ways. Um, yeah, so that was cool. Got to drive another Talon. It was fun. Then I got to drive the new Honda CRV. Oh, mm-hmm. did you record that? I did. Yes, there will be a DM review coming, or DM first drive rather, coming on August 30th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. However, I shot a sound test without driving impressions that will be going live this weekend. Oh, so if you would like to see and hear the new Honda CRV, stay tuned to DM Sound because that will be coming. Did I have a Bose? No. Oh, okay. And this is interesting. There are four trims to the new CRV EX, Sport, EXL, and Sport Touring. (laughs) <laughs> the Sport and Sport Touring models are hybrids. EX and EXL are gas. And you can only get the Bose on the top trim Sport Touring. And they only had gas cars there. So I drove an EXL. So no it Bose. had a bass sound system. Essentially. Did it have tweeters? Yes. So it was probably like a... Let me, Sorry. Can I guess what tier it was or are we not going to reveal that yet? No, I'll reveal it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say C plus B minus. I think that's right about yeah, yeah. about what it was mm-hmm. i think it, it was a c overall but yeah. it was like pushing ish yeah figure usually in a car like that if you've got tweeters you know you know however many speakers it's yep. can't be that bad unless it's a subaru but well some previous honda systems have been really bad they're like 10 speaker oh like the ridge line audio ridge line yeah, line was terrible yep, yep like even like f tier exactly <laughs> yep but no this was much better than that but it was definitely not as good as the Civic Bose, which is, we, we drove Civics out there, so I had a direct comparison mm. to be able to listen to the Civic Bose. That's an A-tier system, up. isn't it? B. B. The, C- yeah. the Civic Bose is a B? Yeah, because it's it's a huge leap from previous Civics, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it still has weird, like, hollowness. Okay. It's uh, not as good as a Mazda base. Bose. Exactly. Mazda Bose. CX-30 Bose. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a, definitely A-tier. Yep. But yeah, stay tuned. I like the... I, I can't say anything about how the CX-30... CRV drives. Yeah. However, I like the way it looks a lot. Um, and functionality is great. Interestingly, no heated rear seats, even on the top. Mm, take that back. Top trim will have heated rear seats. Ah, okay. Yep. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything it didn't have. Amos and I drove it together for the review. So if uh, oh, that's cool. If you've gotten accustomed to having a Chris in the passenger seat for DM reviews, uh, don't be worried because we replaced him with substitute Chris Brower for this review. How does that feel to be the substitute, Chris? <laughs> I know. I, I, haven't done a, I haven't done much for the Topher channel recently. I, I, sh, I filmed uh, the Figaro. Nissan Figaro, yeah, which I sent to him last week. So It could go live anywhere from today to the next 2024. Year. Yeah, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. <laughs> you never know when it's going to pop up. You never up. know when it's going to pop up. Yep. No, CRV is going to do really well. It looks exactly like a Civic. I would show you all on the screen. Well, I actually like I could just show you right here for all of you listening. Uh, rip. Yeah. Um, wait, what are we, what are you pulling up? The new CRV? Yep. Did you guys get to do anything with the Civic Type R? You got to look at it. You didn't get to ride in it or anything? No. Yeah, it's an attractive vehicle. Yeah. This is the gas. This is the hybrid. How do you know the difference? I just, bumper? Uh, yeah. And the wheels. 19 inches on the hybrid. So the... The high, like the higher trim cars, are all hybrid. No, the the second trim and the fourth trim are hybrids. The first and the third are gas. So, what trim did you drive? The third trim. Third trim. Okay. Yeah, so it was probably pretty nice. It's still, yeah, it's still nice. Yeah, it was uh, very, it was well equipped. Can you talk about the powertrain or no? I can tell you that it is a one point five liter in line four. Mated to a CVT. That's all I wanted to know. Yes, but it is tuned quite differently than both the previous gen and. A lot of the, a lot. If, of I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably tuned like the Civic CVT. Perhaps. Perhaps you can't it confirm nor be. deny. Yeah, you, I couldn't yeah. tell you, but I can tell you that I, I don't know if I can tell you about its torque curves because I don't think that's public information yet. Okay, yeah, don't but talk about it. One thing that is very cool about the CRV, the load floor is so low. 
in the back. Like, you know how we stand next to and you open the thing up? It's like just above my knees low. And you can make it flat in both the cars. So like you mm. can straight up Honda's slide. Honda's big on that. that. Yeah, yeah, very accessible car. Chris Naughton is a big enthusiast of uh, load low, space. Low, low load floors? Well, he was he was very excited. We drove the uh, HRV, the new HRV. Yes. And when you fold the back seats down, they like collapse in on themselves kind of. And they, they like fold further into the car to make a flat load service for the back of that, this, which is also very low. Right. The HRV has always been a big fan of that. Uh, that's seats. that's the interior you see it looks exactly like all the other new mm -hmm. hondas no it literally looks just like a civic inside yeah but it, it i mean it works really well heated seat button smack dab in the middle of the wheel it's a very bmw thing to do smart it's big brain yeah why uh because I, there are many um owners of crvs who would forget where their heated seat button is if it weren't Right. See, I like having it on the steering wheel, but I don't like having it in the middle of the steering wheel. I like having it where I can hit it with my thumb. I agree, but because that you have to like, like on BMWs, I think it's in a, and I don't think it looks good either. I, I think for it's an aesthetic thing for more for me that I don't care for it because you only turn it on essentially once in the drive, so that's not a big deal. But yeah, either way, I'm expecting it to be a very good car upon initial uh, visual inspection. I'm surprised, honestly, right. that they haven't gone more vibes of the first gen crv i do agree as with that recently. because everything else is going ruggedy yeah i'm surprised they haven't brought back like the spare tire and more cladding and kind of just like like in the picnic table in the back and like all that stuff i was just about to you mention know? that there's no spare tire in the hybrid model wow. and yeah big big no-no for yeah. a lot of crv buyers and i asked the designer i was or manufacturer guy or something like that i was like did you consider just plopping on uh, uh one under the trunk like the the lift gate or whatever, like the previous, the first and second, and he said they actually did consider that, but it's too late in the design thing, and it was, it was too late to put it on there. But that would have been smart. Yeah. Someone could do an accessory. They need to make a CRV Trail Sport. They could get away with that. Oh, and they could, if they don't, they're stupid. Well, they'll do you know, the CRV Trail Sport, and a really cool thing would be to throw a picnic table under the floor and throw a spare tire on it. That would yeah, be cool. that is Honda. If you're listening, Lynn, Lynn, Chris, and those higher up. Yeah. Do what I just said. Yeah. And put the put the spare yeah. tire on the back. Also news from Honda. Um, there has been a new Accord spied. Have you seen you'd never guess what it looks like? <laughs> Is it a 2024 or 23? Uh just go 23. That'll probably be your uh your spy shots. There you go. Is that is it this? Yeah. No, no. Oh, that's no, a no, render. No. That's this? A, yeah. It kind of looks like a Buick. You just want everything to look like a Buick, though. I think the new Buicks are attractive. Yeah. Okay. So, that's that's a rendering of what someone thinks it's going to look like based off of the of the spy shot. Attractive. Yeah. Also, kind of looks like a uh, like when they were trying to figure out what the new Mustang was going to look like back around like tourist time and everything. Like yeah. Last gen kind of looks like what the rendering. I mean, I think it just looks like a big Civic. Yeah. Well. I mean, hey, I'm down with big Civic. Mm -hmm. New Civic is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love the Civic. The Civic. The Civic walked so the crv and accord could run essentially the generation and yep. the hrv yeah well the hrv is yeah well the hrv is an okay car it's just way too slow like it's scary slow yeah. can't comment on the crv yet but okay. tune in in a few well weeks if it's a 1.5 well. turbo i'm sure it's fine the the hrv was a two liter naturally aspirated i think with okay. like 100 horsepower and a cvt <laughs> If you watch either the video on Daily Motor or on the Topher, I, I, I don't know if I did a... We don't have a driving one I didn't, on HRV. Yeah, I did. You did? I did, a, I did a DM test drive on the HRV while I was in Washington. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, yeah, if you watch either that one or the one on the Topher, I think the one on the Topher, I stopped and I did like an acceleration or a launch or whatever, and 0 to 60 was like 16 seconds or something. That's pretty bad. Very slow. I liked the car though otherwise, which was the sad part is that it was if they if they put if they put the one five turbo in there, it would be great. I didn't even ever have a problem with the CVT. How many views does it have? Uh three thousand six hundred. Wow. Mm-hmm. You Heck. made decent money, you made twenty bucks. Oh cool. Let's see what my one on the Topher has. Probably more than that. Good chance. Heck. Yeah. There were two well, aside from the spare tire. Only one flaw with the CRV that I could find regarding its its space and and interior and everything. The rear seats they recline a bunch, but it's very difficult to 
unrecline them. You have to do the sort of reach behind you thing. So while you're sitting in it, you can't do it. Essentially. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 115,000. 115,000. That's quite not good. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, not bad at all. I think that's more than the Winding Road video got, actually. Probably. It probably is. That's very good, actually. Yeah, Honda should invite us to more things. Lynn, Chris, if you're listening. I love I just, Honda events. Yeah, I do, I do. too. The more reason to have loved this Honda event after driving the CRV, I got to drive a Honda Civic HPD yeah. race car. How'd that go Civic for you? Race car. Yeah, how, how did that go? Well, it, it did it emerge with all of its gears once you were done driving it? No. <laughs> okay. And it's funny you should ask that. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, this is a an actual Honda Civic Si race car that you can buy. Ooh, nice belly right there. Sorry. Oh, scandal. It is that's gonna be our thumbnail right there. Please don't make that the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, it's definitely gonna be the thumbnail. <laughs> the you can you can buy this race car from Honda and it is it's literally just a Civic Si that they pull off the assembly line before it gets all its interior and everything. And they put in a cool gauge cluster inspired by the NSX and Sweet. Essentially, that's it. It's just a naked interior. They probably put the roll cage in there for you as well, but it's something like fifty-five thousand dollars. It's the second cheapest. Like, is it supposed to be like spec Civic Si yes. or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Toyota does that too. You can they'll sell you a JR86 that's stripped out. Right. Well, and Mazda will the Miata. Yeah. I think the Miata is the cheapest like spec car you can yeah. buy, but the Civic is second. And it's the same powertrain, everything like that. They. At least for their race car. I don't know if it's for all the HPD cars or just for their race car. Probably all the HPD cars. They reinforce fourth gear, which we'll get back to in a moment. Uh, <laughs> because fourth gear tends to be used for a lot of their racetracks. And they put in new brake calipers in the front. Okay. And that's it. Same cooling. Same. It's a big flex. Yeah, huge flex. And you can yeah. throw this car. So I let... Tom and Chris drive first because I figured Chris, like there's kind of some rain moving in and everything. I was like, Chris, you get this. You guys are more excited because don't get me wrong. I was excited to drive it, but like so I've had a lot after you do lemons, it's like you have a lot of time in a race car and yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not as exciting as a brand new, like purpose built spec race car and everything, but like you take any car and you strip everything out, put sticky tires on it and a roll cage, it's going to feel like like exciting it's a ton of grip right. yeah and and so i knew what it was going to be like out there essentially yeah. so i let them drive they had an awesome time i got in started driving it was very cool very very fun and everything i came out of a corner and was already in third gear and applied power and all of a sudden the revs spiked and my third gear was gone okay yeah i had never had that happen on a car yeah. i'm very lucky that the person the the pro driver was sitting next to me because they were some people weren't driving with pro drivers like Tom Tedward when he went to go drive there wasn't going to be anyone next to him and he was like can you like ride with me cuz they were just like yeah go for it and these they were literally racing these cars next week like this coming weekend like these cars are going they were actual in use race cars nice and and I blew a gear out of one of them fortunately the the racer was like oh yeah we thought that might happen well i mean it wasn't your fault i no, saw it no it wasn't video. my fault at all no. yeah in fact i should send that to him just to like Solidify that Solidify it wasn't your was fault. My fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, either way, car was cool. You just uh, converted it to a five-speed for them. You're right. You know, I figured you it would just. You said they don't. The only gear they use is fourth. They anyways. should be driving fast enough so that they should only need fourth and That's fifth, right. and sixth mm -hmm. gear. Yeah. Yep. 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 So that was really cool. And then after all of that, we got to go drinking a lot. Uh, Nashville Dude, is a Nashville's crazy city. Insane. Yeah, I, I went to Nashville. Or stopped in Nashville when I was 19 on spring break and it was just like the whole town is just a party constantly I'm sure it's gotten even more so probably crazier since you had been there probably so many bachelorette parties did you see oh the um goodness. the the pickup trucks that they make into like limos Jeep Wranglers actually oh Jeep Wranglers okay yep. I saw one that extended was extended limo Wranglers that they could stand on the roof and they had like the yep. Yep, roof drinking those except they were f-150s that they Yee, yee but it was the bed that got was extended i'm sure that's, that's a very cool. safe <laughs> oh yeah sort super of thing. Re -pro -pro you know very rigid vehicle yeah, yeah 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 well they have to be for all those bachelorettes jumping around i heard and also saw an advertisement for the same thing that some bachelorette parties will decide to go so crazy hard in the paint that they will choose to get ivs the next morning in order to rehydrate oh right and yeah continue drinking the next yeah. day my cousin has a company that they they specialize in that it's called ivico in um 
metro detroit area somewhere really um you and your cousins man yeah cousins this is so this is my cousin Anne marie this is her sister victoria she has um ivy co and Anne marie's the one do. who bought a cac uh no 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 Anne marie's the one in chicago michelle she bought an xc40 michelle bought an xc40 michelle bought an xc40, michelle bought an XC40. who bought a cx5 cx5 michelle that was before the xc40 she had a cx5 and i have a lot of cousins who was the one who had the nissan rogue that is my dad's cousin. Oh, I see. So my second cousin. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you have a cousin. Does IV. A lot of cousins. Who around Detroit needs that. IVs the next morning? Some people just some party people like to go get IVs and get liquids pumped into them. So if you're interested, hit up hit up Victoria. Tell her that I sent you. Mm-hmm. At IVco. At IVco. Dot co. Dot co. Dot uk. Yeah, Nashville is crazy. Uh, not a huge fan of the country music. I am not. I just. Oh yeah, no. It's I it's fine to like listen to in the background. I just. No, I really. It was played too. I loud. can't think of somewhere that Chris Amos and Ted Wood would rather be less than Nashville. Chris Amos did tend to go to bed at at an early well, hour. Tom, on another. On I guess he hand, just likes a party. He regardless. had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. He he was he went to karaoke. He didn't sing, but he went out. Uh, shout out Kirk Kreifels, if you're watching. I know you're listening. Uh, did some karaoke. Did a great job. Um, Jess from Motor Week, also karaoke. Did a great job. And yeah, it was, a, it was fun. Yeah, I love hanging out with Tom. He's good. He's yeah, that good was really to, cool. It was the first press event that Tom, Chris, and I were all at. Yeah, that was, I know, I'm was jealous. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to go anyways, but. Yeah, well, you know, Topher dries once it just. If I can I get my shit together and post on there. I'm be too busy editing daily motor videos. Yeah, and winding road. And Topher videos that don't get published. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Honda, cool. Oh, and then we got to ride in a Honda marine powered boat. Dude, what? <laughs> How many activities are at this event? It sounds Tons crazy. of activities because after that, and the boat was very nice, by the way, super smooth, quiet, calm uh, boat motor. Mm. It's above the side. cool. We just got a uh, Lexus UX delivery. The Ux is here. Ux. After uh, the boat was, it's practically just a car motor in in the boat, and it's just what motor very smooth. is it? Well, there's different ones, but there's like a two liter, and I think a three point two liter in a boat. I thought boats had to have like sixteen hundred horsepower to move out of their own way. Oh, not at all. the The motor that we were in is one hundred and fifty horse. Okay, twenty one foot boat. And it was so like smooth and wow. Yeah. Why do boomers then put 16 V8s in their boats? Uh, to convert petrol into noise. Right. That's the only reason is to be obnoxious. It's kind of like the people that buy Harleys. Yes. Yes. I will point out that at least we've talked, talked on the podcast before about the exponential nature of air resistance to speed. Mm. Well, when you're dealing with water, that's even more dramatic. Right. So the, the, the power necessary to go... 30 miles per hour is going to be much, much, much less, exponentially less than the power to go 70 miles per hour. So you might need like 1,600 horsepower to do 90 in a boat that you'd only need like 200 horsepower to do 30. See what I'm saying? So some of those boomers might want to go 90 is what I'm saying. That's terrifying to think about. A hundred percent. Because if you've ever been on a boat on the water, 25 feels like 70. No, it does really. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But Honda builds great motors. And of course, they're showing us that their new app is much like a lot of the new car apps where you can like see the amount of fuel in your boat, even if it's down in storage or something like that. Oh, in like the that. boat? I yeah. thought you meant the car. No, well, it's oh, like wow. the same app, but it's All for right. boats now. So like, cool. and, and that actually, at first I was like, it's dumb, but I thought about <laughs> it more. And it is a good point because if you own a boat and a wife, then when you want to take said wife on said boat and you get to the boat and it's empty on fuel or the battery's dead, your entire weekend and marriage is then ruined. So using the Honda app, you can save your weekend and your marriage by checking the fuel level and the battery level before you depart. That, that's a daily motor top tip right top there. Tip if you have a boat. Besides like the wife ownership thing. That, if you're know. Mormon and you own a boat, yeah. it should be a Honda. That would be pearl, plural wives. Yeah, multiple mm-hmm. wives. Yes. If <laughs> we're gonna move on, should we move on to what we drove? This Not week? yet, because the Honda weekend wasn't over Jeez, at the boat ride. Dude. Then we got to progress to the racetrack where Honda was powering multiple Indy cars. So you went and to the racetrack twice. Uh, yes, we went to the racetrack, the Nashville Super Speedway. Where did you break then, the Civic? 
That was on Nashville Super Speedway. The race itself, the IndyCar race, was on a street course through the streets of Nashville. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very gnarly. And they had uh, Honda racing all over the place, and they won. They won the race yesterday. So, Oh, the air conditioner is cheering as well. Yes. Yep, yep. Uh, Honda makes very good motors in everything from boats to talons to mm -hmm. CRVs. Earth maybe, dreams, baby. Uh, to the race cars. So, yeah. Um, what did we drive this week? A Mazda CX-30 and a Bolt Eve. Tell us about the CX-30. Uh, it was great. I mean, I drove it 500 mile round trip Chicago and back and it was very comfortable. Great seats, minimal road and wind intrusion. Uh, Better easy, seats than the three series you rode in. That's right. Yeah. Comfy seats. And also it was the perfect size for Chicago. Once you get into Chicago, you have to start driving like, you know, what would the word a dick? You have to start driving like an asshole when you get into Chicago because put your turn signal on and you get over that rule applies to everything in Chicago. People just get over without looking and you have to expect that the CX 30 is such a good size. You can just kind of squeeze it in gaps. You know, you can maneuver around and you don't feel like, you're driving a bus or anything and it's lifted up obviously a subcompact suv so it's comfy and you can run over potholes and not worry about it and um it's easy to parallel park as well do you think it's the car you would choose in that segment um it'd be up there yeah that or the volvo i like the volvo but i don't like the infotainment in the volvo because it doesn't have apple carplay i don't think I, don't, I can never it, keep track of the Volvos. It's, no, the, it's, different. it received an update while Amos had the car, the last electric Volvo we really? had. It received an update to have Apple CarPlay. Oh, I should talk to Michelle about that because she was complaining about how she didn't have Apple CarPlay, but she must have it now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, what what would you go with in that segment? Because the CX-30 is very good. The XC-40 is very good. Um, You'd maybe go for the Ford EcoSport or the Chevy Trax. Yeah, if, if you hated yourself in life. <laughs> all around you then you could go with one of those uh, too. The, the hrv while i like it it wouldn't be my choice because i don't the powertrain is just not there well so i had a corolla cross mm. no i worry about putting those basic bitch cheap cars in with the cx30 because the cx30 is like yeah but you almost can, as nice as that q3 you can though. get a really cheap cx30 though can't you i know but the problem is is mazda's given us all these beautiful top trim cars over the last yeah, we don't know what the base model's like. We don't know what the base models are like. What no. if you get in and all that beautiful model. leather is just like cheap, chintzy yeah. plastic? Well, then what would you compare it to? XC40, I think, would be fair. I think XC40 is the most fair. RDX is too big. Yeah. Prized Acura doesn't have a smaller entry. Maybe they'll make an Acura, like, HRV. Maybe. Alfa Romeo's coming out with one. The Tonale. Yeah. And the, yeah. there's going to the be, be a Dodge equivalent of it. Mm -hmm. That'll be Stolen. only driven by... Thieves? No, I, I don't want to generalize, actually. Fair enough. It's going to be the same people that drive journeys. Is all, I'll just say that. Yes, you are correct. Yeah, yeah. I think CX, CX-30 would be up there near the top for me as well. Why am I blanking on cars in that segment? Because they don't Well, the um, uh, Bronco Sport. Bronco the Sport Bronco cool. Sport's really good. Yeah. Yep. I don't think I'd buy it, though, because you've a thousand million bazillion other people have Bronco Sports. Yeah, that and they like to break. Do they? What breaks? Just things. Do you know that um, when the first Bronco Sport that came into Bautman, I think it's been long enough now to where this won't this won't matter, but the first Bronco Sport came in before Embargo, before we had a press car and everything. It was, I think, before I even worked with you guys. Mm -hmm. It was right around that time. And Bautman got in a, a Bronco Sport, and I called Chris, and I was like, hey, you got to come drive this. It's, it's literally selling this afternoon, but if you come this morning, you can shoot a video on it. So we did. And there's like all these weird cuts in his video because it kept throwing a check engine light and like misfiring and stuff during his drive, but then it would fix itself. Like it would bounce back and be fine. Um, and they, obviously it went into service before they like oh, okay. sold it. I was going to ask if they sold it. Or... No, it, it had to, it had to stay. It, okay. it stuck around, but congratulations. Your Bronco sport is here, but yeah. you can't drive it yet. And it's running on two cylinders. It's running on two cylinders yeah. and it's, it's not cylinder deactivation. It's not intentional. <laughs> No, that, that video did great, though, for him because he was like the first drive of the Bronco Sport on YouTube. Right. There was like no one else had done it. Mm -hmm. So it was, that, was, that was cool. You do raise an interesting point that I, part of me has been nervous about keeping our Ford Maverick for a long time, considering it's a first model year of a, of a model and everything. They generally say not to do that. But if my car breaks, it'll just make for good YouTube content. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and honestly, seventy five hundred miles in now, it's been flawless. Anything so. we can do surrounding cars is just for content. Yeah. It's like, why do I have seven cars that I don't drive? Content, right. even mm-hmm. though I don't. Don't film content on them either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're. Mm, I'm trying. I have good intentions. We filmed your roadster. We did actually. We did. Motor, we did film and that. That will be going up in a few weeks, and we'll yeah. see how that does. And uh, the Topher put me in, or gave me contact info for someone that is a mobile interior repairer. Okay. So I'm gonna call him probably sometime this week and see if he can come fix the driver's seat. That'd be nice. That'll and add a, a gazillion things. dollars in value. I think some of the rattlies are worse than the driver's seat because once you sit down in the driver's seat, you never notice it. Yeah, but. Why I can't? It drives me nuts. It's hideous. Okay, I have to get that fixed. Because you never drive the car. Well, I've only owned it for a week. <laughs> I drove it a lot. Also, in the first week. okay, I don't. I don't plan on keeping this car forever unless it real. I start driving a lot and it really impresses me. But you can't sell a car with a ripped ass driver's seat like that. I mean, you could, but it's just like. I oh, know. I'm not saying don't fix it. Yeah. I'm just saying like that's my the that's glove box is top priority. A, a top well, I'm gonna priority have Keone do the glove box. It just needs different hardware. That'll happen in about October. You're lucky. It's just a glove box. I'll come here with him and help him. Okay. So we, we, working in this garage sometimes, <laughs> I, I feel like we are like the kindergarten teachers and they have one of those ropes that all the kids have to hold on to when they cross the street. Oh, no. And we have to like, come on, everyone. Come on. Let's get this stuff taken care of. Yeah. And then you're like, Jimmy, you're going to clean up this mess, right? And they're like, mm-hmm. And then you come back two hours later and the mess is not cleaned up, but in fact larger. <laughs> and you go, oh, did we forget to clean up the mess? <laughs> oh. Charlie uh, feels has big feelings about this right now, clearly. Big, big feels. Big feels. Well, it's probably because I came up to the garage today to deliver Parking our press car was, and, and, yeah. and all four spots were taken. Yeah, that was a thing. Yep. But I took matters into my own hands. Yeah, you just, sometimes you just got to. Sometimes gotta, that's how you got to do it. In life. Sometimes, you know, and I, I live my life like that, just avoiding conflict. And mm-hmm. it's honestly, it, it's worth it for me in the end. Yeah. Keeps your hair. Some, some things might not, not be fair, right. but I'd rather just deal with something and not have to uh be involved in conflict okay well if you're interested in uh starting an abusive relationship with someone <laughs> uh chris's phone number is 734 <laughs> that probably sounded really bad yeah um so the cx30 was good this i just wouldn't pretty though t- at least sorry that is pretty uh cx30 is good i just wouldn't get the turbo and get the normal motor no i don't see any Turbo's need for it just a waste uh, of the tofers price. was his Front wheel drive, front, front, front wheel drive non turbo, and they don't. And you make that do anymore. get a slightly. Oh, they don't make that anymore, because you you used to get a slightly uh, bigger fuel tank. Slightly, like a gallon more. I actually did. You get the slightly bigger one with the all wheel drive or with the front wheel drive? The front wheel drive got a bigger one, I think, because there was more room for it, because there was no rear drive bits. Or there's the flip side argument in that they gave the larger fuel tank to the all wheel drive because it needed it because it got worse fuel economy. Let's see. Let's consult fueleconomy.gov. That's so loud. I don't think it's going to come through on the mics, though. So, Well, if you're William Long, tell us if the air conditioner is coming through. <laughs> yes, please do that. And as we wait for fueleconomy.gov to load. Are you hotspotting off your phone? Yes. <laughs> the other car we drove this week is the Chevy Bolt UV. I have a lot to say about this car. Great, because I drove it for a day and I have hardly any impressions. So, yes, here we go. I always liked the Bolt in principle. I always said, hey, the Bolt's one of the early EVs. Chevy's been doing electric vehicles since 2011, so they have a lot of experience with it. And it's it's affordable. It's not the most attractive, but it's a very good functional car, and you should highly, highly consider it. But I kind of wrote it off as like a, yeah, it's a it's a smart move, but like it's not it's gonna be very utilitarian. It's not gonna be a car you're gonna love owning sort of deal. I was mistaken. That car actually grew on both me and Alyssa throughout the week. And like we would 100% both consider buying one. And she had always been very like Chevy sucks sort of like mentality without much experience. I mean, her first car was a Saturn. But other than that. Really? Yes. We should talk about Saturns later. Okay. We can do that. Mm -hmm. But she was always like, aren't Chevys just like cheap? shitty like i don't want anything to do with them i'm like because i've been trying to convince her into a volt and she's like i don't i don't want that wow I just how searched, did you how did that even happen <laughs> i searched for 2021 chevrolet cx30 how, how did, did that like, happen how did it look... i thought i watched you click mazda 
thought I did too. It's it's like it's listening. I'm, I I definitely clicked Mazda, the X30. There we go. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, so here is two point five. Is that the turbo? This is the here's two wheel drive. I don't know why they drive. have two listings for them, but here's two wheel drive, and then here's <clears throat> the X30 two wheel drive has a thirteen point five gallon tank. No, oh, you are right, Chris. The all wheel drive has twelve point <clears> seven. <throat> I was correct. Thank you. Yes, you are correct. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I remembered uh, the Topher telling me that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Topher's Topher's correct. Mm -hmm. Topher's are usually correct. Right. But Alyssa spent a lot of time in the car. She loved driving it. I spent a good amount of the time in the car. I loved driving it. It's it's much faster than the Leaf. It feels much more premium than the Leaf. Looks better. Mm, I I the beholder com, uh, compared to the Leaf in terms of appearance, but is larger than the Leaf. Yeah. And just overall, much much better technology. Oh my gosh, we had Super Cruise in this Super one, Cruise, which. Right. Is not the same Super Cruise I as is on the truck, which I is know. very stupid. Yeah, the Super Cruise and the Bolt will not change lanes for you. No, whereas the truck. I will. was very disappointed. Yeah, I even hit up Chevy PR and was like, "Is something not working right?" And they're like, "No, that's proper." I was like, "Okay, great." Other than that, and the fact the biggest Achilles heel being that you cannot fast charge it at over fifty kilowatts. That was going to be my thing: is how long does it take to fully charge it? Well, if you just plug it in at home, it's the same as any hey, other. What AV. if you go to a charge point? How long will it take to charge? If you go to a charge point at 20%, how long will it take it to charge? Probably like an hour and a half. That isn't too bad. Maybe two hours. Oh, that's a long time. But it's it's fast charging is not intended to be charging it to full. What it's intended to, to 80, do. 80, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. But it doesn't fast charge. It doesn't. It's about four to six times slower than all the other leading EVs. Oh. So why would anyone buy one? How much is that car? That's the interesting thing is for 2023 model year, they chopped a whole bunch off the price and it's like as spec, the one we have parked outside right now, 38,000, 37,000. That's, that's, that's why somebody would buy one. Exactly. <clears throat> it would make for an excellent second vehicle. Yeah. Like if, if we Round got one, we'd keep stuff. the Maverick and because Alyssa's never going to drive more than a few hundred miles yeah. in, in a day. And it even still, it got 220 miles of range on the highway. So not too bad, but here's to, to put it into a real world perspective of why the fast charging sucks. Alyssa's parents' house and back is a 280 mile round trip. We've made that trip many, many times. If when we took the Mach-E, the i4 and the Model Y, they all of them took about 15 minutes of fast charging or so to get home. So we'd essentially go have dinner, come home on the way back. We'd swing off, charge, stretch our legs, look at some memes and we're home. Right. 15 minutes. Bolt, if we did that exact same trip, needed 50 minutes to charge. That's unacceptable because it's going to be 10 o'clock. We're not going to want to sit there yeah. screwing around for 50, 50 minutes. minutes. Yeah, that's essentially an hour wasted. Whereas, yeah. I mean, pulling off for 15 minutes is not a big deal. Yep. So that's that's why we wouldn't own a Bolt. Ultimately. So the top tip is to buy a Kia EV6. Yeah. Yeah. Probably be the closest. Or the new Nero EV. The Nero EV. Oh, I'm excited it. to drive that. Yeah, and yeah. that doesn't supercharge very quickly either, but it's still, I think, about 30% faster than the Bolt. So it's better. Mm. But it's not fantastic. Man, when we had that Kia EV6, I think charged so fast. Yeah. It, like, kilowatts, it literally charged so fast. Like yeah. I we went to um I went to Meyer and plugged it in, and like by the time we were done shopping, it was just like charged. Not not yeah. to 80, to a hundred. Yeah. Like it mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Fun fact, though, speaking of electric vehicles, last night, the United States Senate passed a bill that, if passed by the House and signed by the president, will re-enable EV tax credits for Chevrolet, Tesla, and Toyota. Wow. As long as the vehicles, I believe, built in the U.S., which would obviously cause Chevy's issues are. for some Tesla's Toyotas. Teslas are. Yeah, the but Toyotas yeah, probably aren't. Right. So, if that passes... And Chevy doesn't dramatically change the price of the, the Bolt. It'll get that much cheaper. So if you're a Toyota and you're listening, uh, start building your EVs in the U.S. and you'll sell more. Or don't because you'll still sell just as many because they won't be cheap pieces of shit. That's true. The build quality will be a factor. Yeah. Yep. So I like the Bolt a lot. I'm not a huge fan of the Angry Hamster design. Eh, I don't really like the way any Chevy things look right now. <laughs> Besides the Corvette. I don't like the way the Corvette doesn't looks. Like the, that's right. I forgot you don't like the Corvette. Yeah. You like the Camaro. I don't like the way the new Cor what? Camaro What? I like the 2016 to 2019, but when they facelifted it, they ruined it. Well, they ruined it for a year, but they fixed it now. No, they didn't fix it. They band-aided it. 
it's it they, was they painted the bumper a different color and yeah. moved the Chevy badge up. <laughs> Here's a here's a 2017 Camaro. Is... Oh right, yeah, no that this this was a good gen for Camaro. Yeah, I mean that looks excellent. Yeah, that, very, that does, and it has handsome. the flow tie. Yep, yep, yep. Very quite good. Even this is just an SS. Looks very good. Now let's switch to a 2022. Well, you're gonna have to look for a 21 because the 22 looks fine. Well, I mean it, it doesn't look as good, obviously, but go- so the 21. This isn't too bad. The twenty one. I know the you're talking strip. about the super ugly one, but but you yeah. were referring to right now cars. Yeah, I don't I think like. that looks. I mean, it's, it doesn't look as good as the seventeen. So yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. pull up a twenty one because that's properly hideous. Like it's was the it worse. was it twenty one? Yes. No, that's the one you're talking about. Well, no, you're talking about black bumper. Yeah, black bumper car. That yes, that <laughs> so ugly. Didn't they mess it up in twenty nineteen though? No, for the maybe. 2020 model year. Oh yeah, there go to go. the orange one. There oh go. yeah, there That's you what go. You were looking for, and that okay, and then the one on the right is the fix. That's what yes. they like switched it to. Yep. They, they actually call it an emergency facelift. Yeah, an emergency facelift because it's it was so hideous. How could you? How did that pass? It's the it 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 reveals the systematic breakdown of American auto manufacturers where. Certain people have authority and power to just push things through without any checks and balances, and they come out with shitty designs like that. I mean, it's I've never seen a car that looks so just, good get so horrible so quickly. Look at that one. That's not a real car, I don't think. Yeah, go to the blue one up above. This right there. Yeah. Those those were the press photos. Mm-hmm. Everyone was shocked. Yeah. And God, it's, it's ugly. Because before it looked so good. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, whoever's doing Chevy design, I know you're listening. I'm sorry. You got to make your cars look better. I still probably I won't buy them, like but weird. Like, I don't know about Chevy's man. Well, tune in next week to hear. What I like the things. Silverado though. I was going to say you like the Silverado love and, the and Silverado. let us know what you think about another day in the bolt. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I quite liked it. Love the, the Silverado. Bolt. I love the C8 Corvette bolt. I don't know. Yeah. But it's it's just and we say this all the time it's the, it's the in between cars like the Malibu and the Equinox and the Most the, the Traverse S- and like ugh. fun fact I had a conversation with Chevy PR last week oh. regarding Chris Amos the they, Topher. they listened to the podcast uh yes no no but I watched his video no oh okay. I called them and said. Why isn't the Topher invited to Corvette Z06 launch? And he was kind of like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, bro, oh, looks like our network is totally down now. The sexy time TV is trying to. So connect. I don't I don't get this this whole thing about like inviting people with 60 followers to go drive the Z06, but they won't they won't invite Chris. Is Chris, it is it? I have a theory. Is it because they're scared about mass bad press, so they invite people with no followers? That could be a, That could be an but idea. But it's not going to be bad press. It's a freaking I know. Z06. It's going to be awesome. The Topher on one singular C8 video has 5.7 million views on that one They video. must just not want the views. Seriously. Like, why else would they not invite him? Well, I mean, a similar sort of thing happened with DeMiro uh, back when the C8 first came out. He asked Chevy for one, and they never responded. They didn't invite him. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't invite him, and it's like, dog. There must be some sort of weird thing, and they, they want they want smaller outlets. You know what it must be? This, the person oh. who designed the 2020 Camaro facelift must have been reassigned to Chevy PR. To PR. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So either way, <laughs> I I, ta- I think I got to, through to uh, Mr. Trevor at um, Mr. Trevor Tompkins, and I think he, he said you know send an email. We'll we'll consider with Chris getting uh, getting going with the drive. Cool. So I think when is that? They don't know yet. It keeps getting pushed back. Yeah, probably you know. Uh, yeah. I have a buddy that wants to come drive the C eight Z six or come see it. Is that Sean? No, my one of my buddies I met in Chicago last week. Not a cousin. He lives in L A. No. But uh, he he used to own a C7 Z06, ah. and he's like in between cars right now. He had an E46 M3, then he had a C7 Z06. Now he's driving a, a Model 3 Performance, oh. um, but he wants to get back into a Corvette. Don't blame him. So yeah, um, yeah, he wants to he wants to come see the the C8Z when we get it. I think the C8Z is gonna be amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. I've heard them driving 
not at water or anything, but just rumbling around. And, oh my gosh. It's going to be a Ferrari. It's going to be, be like a Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah. This week at Daily Motor headquarters, we have an Infiniti Q60. Whatever that is. Yeah, it's a pretty car. Mm. I'm, I'm going to be really curious to have your perspectives on that car. Uh, quick side note, we got uh, burp support from someone recently in the comments. They said you should burp more. I feel like that might be a fetish thing. No one like just says that. That's strange. <laughs> I, I'll be curious for your opinions on the on the Q60 because you're kind of a, a sports sedan, sports car. Yeah, but it's like, not a sedan though, is it? No, it's a coupe. But yeah. you're like a coupe enthusiast as well. You you I like coupes? Like yeah, you like like that. But kind do of, I like Nissan coupes from 2012? That's what I'm curious to find we'll out. Find out. Yeah. Do, yeah. Does Chris like Nissan coupes from 2012? Find out next week on the Daily Motor podcast. I think I think it's still designed well. I think it it's still a beautiful. Looks good. It's gonna be it's gonna be fast. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. No, I've I've, I've always liked the Q60 design. I think it's really pretty. We haven't gotten the window sticker for it yet. Probably like seventy grand. No, they're really not too bad. Is it a Red Sport four hundred? I think so. I don't know for sure. What I'm curious about is if it has the uh, steer by wire. Oh, that would be bad. I don't I, they probably that. don't put that on journalist cars anymore. But the Topher was t- talking to me about that about how terrible it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we'll see. That's the only reason I know about that is because he he went on a a tangent about how bad that steering was. Right. So I think I asked him. I was like, "What's like the worst steering you've ever felt?" That. See, when we asked Chris like what cars he doesn't like, I feel like that should have been a car that was up there. Oh, the Infinity. Well, the problem is, he uh, he couldn't think of a of an older car that he yeah, that he didn't yeah, like because he true. doesn't. I mean, he just drives new stuff. Right. But. That's a good point. The other car we have this week is. The Lexus UX 250H, a car that, while old, still has a lot to offer. And we'll have to look at the pricing. I've never driven a UX. Is that weird? Is it weird that you haven't? It's weird that I haven't driven it. No, because you made deliberate efforts to not drive them. You remember that story? Yes, I do. Yeah, Yeah, so it's it's not... I have avoided the UX for quite a while, and now I don't have a choice. Well, the cool thing is, is in about 10 or 15 minutes, Chris is going to drive his first Lexus UX, and we're going to get his raw first impressions, because I spent time in one down in Florida. Uh, It's the perfect car for Florida. It was was brown as well. Outside of a Toyota Venza. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Zach, thank you for hooking me up with the UX down in Florida. I know you're listening. And it was, it was honestly a really good car for just one and a half to two people to drive around on vacation. Is Alyssa... One and a half to two. She's somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because you and I would be like a full two people. Mm-hmm. I feel like Alyssa and Emily constitute like <laughs> 0. 0.75 okay. people because they're tiny. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It's an efficient car. I'll be, I'll be curious to see, especially after you just spent time in how much does the Mazda cost? 36000 Mm, yeah smaller $36,000 I have an important order. question though regarding the Lexus hooks you probably know is it an F sport handling because if it is <laughs> I'm <laughs> all of the Lexus press cars recently have been F sport handling every single one of them has been an F sport handling yeah I need to have a discussion uh, with the Jennifer. ES was the IS was the um, what you call it we had another one that was a the RX was an F Sport handling. You know which one wasn't an F Sport handling though was the um, uh, NX, and that was great. Well, uh, you should be able to tell by the badge, right? Yeah, if it has a white F Sport badge. Okay. Fine. This this shouldn't have any F Sport badge because it's a no. Oh, okay, F Sport. I th- believe we have the F Sport Premium package. Oh wait, so it may, it may just be F Sport visual. F Sport steering wheel. Go to the pictures of the car. Wait a sec, wait a sec. How much is it? F Sport Alley. 46. Oh. Yeah. That's like that's like NX territory. Mm-hmm. They're competing with their own car. I know. It's a lot of it's a lot of You can uh, have an NX for 50. Mm-hmm. And like a nice NX for 50. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um Hey then. I guess we'll go back and look at the badge here. If Ooh, the can, wheels look cool. This is a high enough. Well, they're F Sport wheels, don't you know? Yeah. That's not very zoomed in. Can you see? probably is. i can't see yeah well we could just walk outside and find out well go to the um yeah that's gonna be any better not exactly high res photos who takes these pictures well they're just like functional photos uh either way okay. i'll be curious to hear your thoughts any copart cars for us probably not since you've been gallivanting through <sighs> chicago dude lately. the last two weeks i've just been 
like you really ought to make existent. Emily drive so that you can find co-park cars in the passenger. I know. Seat. Well, I don't know. I like to drive. You do like Why to drive. Why don't I go to Facebook? I had a realization the other day. I can't remember if I shared it with you or not or just with Chris and Tom. I don't consider myself as much to be a car enthusiast as I am a driving enthusiast. Mm, okay. I thought about that. You more so than me, though. Yes, me me yeah. more so than you. But me and and all of us to an extent. Right. Um, like I was I was driving your, your Roadster back home. Yeah, you had fun. Yeah, I cared very little about how it looked what it was necessarily i cared about the experience and and the time i was having behind the wheel which was nice yeah and i think that's why like i'd rather take a road trip in my town and country than i would have like a pretty car just sitting in the garage doing nothing Mm. see i i would like to say that i'm like that but i'm totally not i I love like the art aspect of cars like i'm just i love looking at cars right and like you have like the pretty paintings and stuff i'm like oh that's cool but Mm -hmm. like Bam, the the Bam Margera on the, on yes. the Mercy. What it really was that, that made me realize it was going through um, Michael Benet's house and his garage and him talking about all his vehicles and everything. Gorgeous garage. Yeah. Oof. And I'm just like, I was, I, he told us the story of when he was um, rehabbing and, and rebuilding his 911, his orange one. And he talked about how for something like eight years, he spent like nearly every Saturday for like eight hours down at the shop working mm-hmm. on it. And I thought his poor wife, <laughs> I seriously did because if I spent all of my Saturdays in at the garage working on cars, Alyssa yeah. would probably leave me. So she, they met through racing. Okay. She's a big like car person. Like okay. she used to race cars and she probably still does. I don't know mm-hmm. if she still does, but she may have gone with him. I don't know. That's possible. Yeah, she and may, I'm not she saying that she might've not totally had her own life. She probably did totally go with, with him. him honestly. You know, yeah. like, that's, that's fine. I'm just saying if you were in his car shoes, enthusiast yeah. stuff. And I'm a car enthusiast, but light. I'm more of the driving enthusiast. Mm-hmm. How a car feels. Yeah. Yeah. You have a thing? I have a shitty Mercedes if you think it's worth showing. Um, well, I think Will would like to see it. Okay. It's your favorite color, at least. It's your favorite color combo, anyways. My favorite color combo. Yeah, it is. Blue and brown or green and red? You'll see. Okay. Uh, where's the lot number? 510 888. Six two. Is it from Flint? Yes, it is. This is a 2001 Mercedes-Benz E320. I should have said it's your favorite color combo for a LeSabre because it certainly is. Oh, yes. I was going to say. In general, I don't like it. In, in general, it's not. But for a LeSabre, it certainly is. Mm-hmm. This is like the Mercedes version of a of a early a LeSabre. 2000s LeSabre. Mm-hmm. I always very much liked these E classes. Yeah, the only problem with them is they rust out so bad. Oh, do they? They do. You can see that one's got some rust starting. It's a little V6. Okay. You no. Know. A <laughs> little optimistic on their estimated retail value of $7,000. There's no for way. 100,000 miles, well, 2001 they, Mercedes. Yeah, I mean, you know that the retail value is value once fixed. Yeah, but, but still, even then, I that's don't, I don't maybe, know if paying $7,000 I would say this. if you're lucky, you'd get 3500 bucks for yeah. it. If you're lucky. if uh, Yeah, and it would probably need much more than $3,500 to be running and driving properly again. I think it runs. It does run and drive. It's just got a little boo-boo and the front bumper's missing. I'm sure that's the only thing that's possibly There's wrong nothing else wrong Mercedes. with it. No, there's absolutely yeah. nothing else wrong yeah, with okay, it. Okay, okay. These, it's only got 95,000 miles on it. Mm-hmm. These, at least, I don't think had the uh, biodegradable wiring harness. I don't think so either. No, that was the older ones. That's why it's such a shame because the, the W, oh God, W124, which is the E class before this, I don't know the body code for this one, but um, they were such beautiful cars and you could get them in all sorts of configurations. You could have a sedan, you could have a convertible, you could have a wagon, you could have a coupe, but. Um, they just they end up in junkyards in really good shape because the wiring harnesses just like disintegrate mm-hmm. and you just haven't you just can't do anything you know right, like wire, yeah, I've seen fix. being a junkyard enthusiast obviously <laughs> uh, I've seen a ton of really clean W one twenty fours I mean everybody not the convertible because those are really sought after but coupes wagons and sedans like I see all the time because they're wiring harness. yeah and they're clean cars like they're really nice cars but they're just mechanically totaled sounds like Don't perfect sad. candidates for ls swapping totally or electric swapping yeah anything swaps. yeah the saddest one ever was this um 
it was a wagon at uh, at fox auto it was just like a like a beige it was like the same color combo as that beige on beige but it was so clean and it had like i don't remember it had like less than two hundred thousand miles on it and i assumed it was probably just the wiring harness that went but i took the headlights off that car and made a bunch of money on them so what goes into swapping out a wiring harness probably a lot okay probably not worth the i mean even though they're they're really cool cars, I mean, if they're not the convertible, they're really not worth anything. Could you like get one for a lemons car and just like Probably. strip everything oh, out? I'm sure and you could. Since yeah. it's all stripped out, then you could do the well, wiring harness it's, easier. It's the engine wiring harness. I know. Yeah, but like you could take. But I mean, taking out like it. right, right. AC and probably, stuff and, yeah. yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Or you just throw the throw everything away and just use the shell to like do a full drivetrain swap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Sexy times back. Yeah, connecting uh, screen means it's time for us to go. Oh. We'll be back next week to wrap up our thoughts on the Ooks and the 60. And my thoughts on the Oove. Yeah. And the Oove. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we have actually a lot of really exciting cars coming in the end of the month. Have you taken a gander down the schedule recently? No, I saw the X3M. Let's start with the DM schedule. <clears throat> Did you add more on there? Not to ours, but there are a few extras on the Topher schedule. Oh, okay. So after this week, next week, we'll be driving the new Nissan Rogue with the three liter, three, three liter, three cylinder Toyota GR86 manual. That'll be a lot of fun. Oh, Rogue Platinum. Yep. Mm -hmm. With the three cylinder. Yes, with the three cylinder. I'm actually excited for that. I'm not not being sarcastic. And then BMW i4 E40. Yeah, that'll be a good one. I'm very excited about that. That's the wrapper spec, the E40. Um... (laughs) Then we have the Audi RS3 sedan, which Alex on Autos just recently declared his favorite sports car of 2022. Oh, wow. So He's harsh, too. Yep. He's harsh on stuff. BMW X3 M Comp, the douchebag spec. Yeah, my favorite car. Then we make our way over to the Topher schedule, and <gasps> we have the... Oh, I see one that, I'm, that I didn't know about. We, we have the Porsche Macan S, another Porsche coming in. That'll be good. Audi e-tron GT, so not the oh, RS, so the but, the, but the... No... E-tron, the e-tron gt is oh still just not the, the same car just not the oh, RS i version. see yep are we sh- sharing that with him yes mm, if we want to get some time yeah i yeah, mean I we'll go up i mean we have most of the audi stuff already on it but we can drive it then we have the f-150 lightning yeah. we have spent a lot of time in those already mustang mach 1 that'll be cool and, and although a Bronco Raptor. That's what I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. And the one right after it, too. And then, topping everything off, the 911 GT3. I mean, that's just like... Mm-hmm. Delicious. Bronco Raptor. I didn't know they had press vehicles mm-hmm. yet. Though. Yeah, and I, I pushed us quick. As soon as I saw that they were starting to go around the press fleet, I got on it. So, yeah. Going to be a lot Boy. of fun. Be a good rest of the month. So, stay I, tuned. Dude, I hope that f is not a platinum. I, I just, like... They need to like be putting normal ones into the press fleet. Like, give us like an XLT or like an XL, like a base ass lightning. Like, that's what I want to drive. Yeah, I don't think Ford's really making or selling too many of those because they want to upcharge you all the way up to like 80 grand. Because to get the the extended range battery pack, you already have to spend like 70 grand anyway. I don't want the the screen that when you press it, it takes five seconds. Nobody does, but Ford's shoving it down our throats. So they're just going to make us take it. Don't get me wrong. I I think the lightning's great. I just I want to experience one that isn't a platinum because that's all that we've all that we've experienced. Daily Motor top tip: If you're Chris Brower, wait for the Chevy Silverado EV. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. I want to drive that. I want to drive the Rivian. Yeah. And uh, Dodge just announced one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ram. Ram. Whatever. Ram. That's why we, yeah, that's you're why big I, on that because yeah. I always say Dodge. Yeah, it's proper. It used to be Dodge. Yeah, like. 15 years ago get with the times you boomer <laughs> okay boomer you're in a boomer shirt i am oh shit i am in a boomer shirt today emily would got One, this actually. for me uh, she likes putting you in boomer outfits yeah yep you should uh swap into some white new balances cut those jeans off right above white your vans uh, your white vans cut the jeans above your knees and go mow some lawn yeah well i'd have to dye these green I've decided that that's how I am going to announce that Alyssa is pregnant when the time comes. Mm. I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm simply going to buy a pair of white New Balances and start wearing them and wait. Can for you pl- to- wait? Can you actually yeah, do that? Yeah, no, that's 100% my plan. Okay, good. And I, so we're going to be like. I'm going to catch on right away. Yeah, I, you're going to see it. You're going to be like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be uh, fun. Yeah, I'll be sure to get them grass stained too. Good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'll see you next week, everyone. Thank you for listening and watching. We are Chris and Charlie with Daily Motor, and as always,
You can do it. Drive on. Thanks. Thank you.